Hey guys, it's Greg with Apple Explained, and today we're going to explore the history of macOS 10. The first version of macOS 10 was released back on March 24th, 2001, and marked the death of its predecessor, macOS 9. Steve Jobs actually held a mock funeral for macOS 9 on stage during the 2002 Worldwide Developers Conference. The release of macOS 10 began a new era for the Macintosh, one that was a bit furry, since the title of most macOS 10 releases were named after big cats. It all started with a public beta that Apple codenamed Kodiak. While technically macOS 10's development goes all the way back to Next, the computer company Steve Jobs founded after being forced out of Apple, but that's a story for another time. Kodiak, the macOS 10 beta, was released to the public on September 13, 2000 for $29.95. This was a big deal for Apple, since their previous attempts at a Mac operating system overhaul were failures. This release proved that Apple finally had a new workable operating system that that wasn't just vaporware. Something worth mentioning about the public beta is that the Apple logo you see centered on the menu bar had no functional purpose at all. It was only there for looks. The public beta enjoyed about six months of life until macOS 10 Cheetah was ready to ship on March 24, 2001. Cheetah was the first major release of macOS 10 and retailed for $129. It was a huge departure from macOS 9. The most noticeable change was the glossy user interface Apple called Aqua. Steve Jobs famously said, One of the design goals was when you saw it, you wanted to lick it. And he wasn't wrong. The Aqua interface set a new standard for just how appealing a computer interface could be. The dock was another big change from Mac OS 9. It was a new way of organizing your applications and a welcome change from the classic application launch menu. The terminal in Mac OS 10 allowed access to the Unix core, something that was never possible on previous versions of Mac OS. Mac OS 10 also featured a native mail client, address book, and a new native word processor called TextEdit, which replaced simple text in Mac OS 9. With all the good Mac OS X brought, also came the bad. Things like missing features. You couldn't play DVDs or burn CDs, and there were a lot of hardware drivers missing for external devices like printers. Mac OS X was also vulnerable to kernel panics, which would crash the system, leaving users feeling like the operating system wasn't stable. Another issue was speed. you think an operating system named after the fastest land mammal would be quite snappy, but it was sluggish at best and painfully slow at worst. This was mainly due to the new Aqua interface that favored form over function. All the criticism of Mac OS X ultimately resulted in Apple offering users a free upgrade to the next version of the operating system, Mac OS 10.1 Puma. This upgrade addressed many prior complaints by including an Apple DVD player application, support for CD burning, and support for 200 printers out of the box. Although version 10.1 Puma was a more efficient operating system than its predecessor, it still received its share of criticism. Puma's system performance was deemed not enough for many users to adopt Mac OS X as their main operating system. And while it did contain some important improvements, many users complained that the leap from Cheetah to Puma was not large enough. The user interface had barely changed at all, and significant bugs still existed, including the kernel panics that caused system-wide crashes. On August 23, 2002, Apple followed up Puma with Mac OS 10.2 Jaguar. It retailed for $129 and brought much-needed performance improvements, a sleeker look, and over 150 user interface enhancements. It also introduced iChat, an instant messaging client, address book, inkwell for handwriting recognition, and an Apple logo upon startup instead of the happy Mac icon featured in previous versions of the operating system. Jaguar was generally well received by Mac users as a big step forward in stability, speed enhancements, and compatibility, but critics of the operating system were not afraid to speak out, claiming that speed issues with the user interface still existed and that, everything considered, the operating system was still a big step down from Mac OS. 9. Mac OS 10.3 Panther was released on October 24, 2003, and it was the biggest update to Mac OS 10's user interface. Panther retailed for $129 and included more features than Jaguar had the year before, including an updated Finder, a brushed metal interface, fast user switching, a window manager called Expose, File Vault, Safari, iChat AV, which added video conferencing features to iChat 
improved PDF rendering, font book, and better Microsoft Windows compatibility. Panther was an important release for Apple since it served as a true first-class desktop operating system. There wasn't much criticism surrounding this release since it addressed many of the issues in Jaguar, the previous version of the operating system. On April 29th, 2005, Panther was replaced by macOS 10.4 Tiger and still cost users $129 to upgrade. Tiger contained more than 200 new features including a fast search system called Spotlight, a new version of the Safari web browser, dashboard, and a new unified theme. macOS 10 Tiger shocked executives at Microsoft by offering features like fast file searching and improved graphics processing, features Microsoft has spent several years struggling to add to Windows with acceptable performance. Six weeks after its release, Apple had sold 2 million copies of macOS 10.4 Tiger, representing 16% of all macOS 10 users. Apple claimed that Tiger was the most successful operating system release in the company's history. At the Worldwide Developers Conference on June 11, 2007, Steve Jobs announced that out of the 22 million macOS 10 users, more than 67% were using macOS 10.4 Tiger. Apple announced a transition to Intel processors during Tiger's lifetime, making it the first operating system to work on machines with Apple Intel architecture. Also, the original Apple TV, released in March 2007, shipped with a customized version of macOS 10 Tiger branded as Apple TV OS. It replaced the desktop graphical user interface with an updated version of Front Row, which was more appropriate for TVs. Tiger was replaced by macOS 10.5 Leopard on October 26, 2007 after 30 months of use, making Tiger the longest running version of macOS 10. Leopard also sold for $129, and Apple called it the largest update to macOS 10. It brought more than 300 new features, including a redesigned dock, stacks, a semi-transparent menu bar, and an updated finder that incorporated the CoverFlow navigation interface. Other features included support for writing 64-bit graphical user interface applications, an automated backup utility called Time Machine, support for spotlight searches across multiple machines, and the inclusion of Front Row and Photo Booth, which were previously only included with some Macintosh models. Now, Apple has a reputation of being very punctual, but Leopard's release was actually delayed twice. In 2005, Steve Jobs said that Leopard would be released at the end of 2006 or early 2007, but when the end of 2006 came, the release date was changed to spring 2007, but when spring 2007 came, Apple said Leopard's release would be delayed again until October 2007 because of the new development of the iPhone. Something unique about Mac OS X Leopard was its retail packaging. It was significantly smaller than previous versions of Mac OS X, and it sported a lenticular cover, making the Roman numeral 10 appear to be floating above a purple galaxy. Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard was released on August 28, 2009, and it was the first version of Mac OS X to be sold for $29 instead of the usual $129. Because of the low price, initial sales of Snow Leopard were significantly higher than its predecessors. But rather than delivering big changes to appearance and functionality, Snow Leopard focused on under-the-hood improvements, like enhancing performance, efficiency, and stability of the operating system. The most noticeable changes were increased disk space after installation due to the lighter operating system, a more responsive finder, faster time machine backups, more reliable and user-friendly disk ejects, improvements to the preview application, and a faster Safari web browser. The Mac App Store became available in Snow Leopard with the 10.6.6 update and caused a problem for Mac users when Snow Leopard was replaced by Mac OS 10.7 Lion on July 20th, 2011. The issue was Apple didn't initially sell any physical copies of Lion. Instead, the operating system was available exclusively as a download from the Mac App Store for $29.99. The only prior version of Mac OS X that supported the Mac App Store was Snow Leopard, which meant any machine running Tiger or Leopard would first have to be upgraded to Snow Leopard as opposed to upgrading directly to Lion. Apple remedied this situation a couple weeks later by announcing a USB flash drive containing Mac OS X Lion priced at $69. Lion brought developments made in iOS to Mac OS X like an easily navigatable display of installed applications called Launchpad and more multi-touch gesture use across the system. It also featured auto-hiding scroll bars, mission control, full screen applications, and system-wide auto-saving. Mac OS 10.8 Mountain Lion was released on July 25th, 2012, following the release of Lion the previous year. It was the first time Mac OS 10 was updated after one year instead of the usual two years. This allowed Mac OS 10 updates to align with the annual iOS updates. Mountain Lion featured Gatekeeper, a malware blocker, integration with Game Center and iCloud, and the Safari web browser was 
updated to version 6. As on iOS, notes and reminders became full applications, separate from mail and calendar, while the iChat application was replaced with a version of iOS's messages. Mountain Lion also added a version of Notification Center, which groups updates from different applications in one place. Integrated links allowed the user to quickly post content to Twitter, and Facebook integration was also planned, but not available at launch. Mac OS X Mountain Lion received positive reviews, with critics praising Notification Center, messages, and speed improvements over Lion, while criticizing iCloud for unreliability and Game Center for lack of games. Mountain Lion sold 3 million units in the first four days, and became Apple's most popular Mac OS X release at the time. The release of Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks on June 11, 2013 was unique in a couple of ways. It was the first version of Mac OS X not named after a cat. Instead, Apple announced they'd begin naming new versions of Mac OS X after landmarks in their home state of California. Also, Mavericks was the first Mac operating system to be available for free, and all versions after Mavericks would remain free to download. Mavericks emphasized battery life, finder improvements, and other features for power users like improved external display support. Mavericks also included deeper iCloud integration, reduced skeuomorphism, improved notification center, and new apps like Maps and iBooks. The next version of Mac OS X called Yosemite was released on October 16, 2014. It featured a major overhaul of the Mac OS user interface by replacing skeuomorphism with flat design and blurred translucency effects, following the aesthetic introduced in iOS 7. Other design changes included new icons, a dark color scheme, and a new system typeface called Helvetica Noye. The dock also became a 2D translucent rectangle instead of a skeuomorphic glass shelf. Many of Yosemite's new features focused on the theme of continuity, increasing its integration with other Apple services and platforms such as iCloud and iOS. The handoff functionality allowed the operating system to integrate with iOS 8 devices over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and enabled Mac users to make and answer phone calls, send and receive text messages, activate personal hotspots, or load items being worked on in a mobile app directly into Mac OS. During Yosemite's lifetime, Apple discontinued iPhone and Aperture and replaced it with the Photos app. This sparked some outrage among Aperture users who pointed out that Photos was not a suitable replacement for Aperture, since it didn't contain any of the advanced features that pro users needed. Mac OS 10.11 El Capitan was released on September 30th, 2015. Similar to Snow Leopard, Apple said the release contained refinements to the Mac experience and improvements to system performance rather than new features. Refinements included public transportation built into the Maps application, graphical user interface improvements to the Notes application, adopting San Francisco as the system font for clearer legibility, and the introduction of system integrity protection. The Metal API, first introduced in iOS 8, was also included in El Capitan. Mac OS 10.12 Sierra was released to the public on September 20th, 2016. New features included Siri, optimized storage, auto unlock with the Apple Watch, night shift, and updates to photos, messages, and iTunes. During Sierra's introduction, Apple announced they'd be changing the name of Mac OS X to Mac OS. This change made sense since it mirrored Apple's other operating systems, watchOS, tvOS, and iOS. Mac OS 10.13 High Sierra was released on September 25th, 2017, and focused on performance improvements and technical updates rather than new features. Notable changes included the Apple File System, Metal 2, support for HEVC and HEIF, and updates to Photos, Mail, Safari, Notes, and Siri. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the history of Mac OS X. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.